Hey, what's up, everybody? How you guys doing tonight? Hopefully pretty well. Oh, it's been a pretty good day for me. Well, I didn't get a ton of sleep last night, but since since I woke up and I actually took a nap this afternoon, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> like a short one, but you know, it helps, right? Like any little tiny bit. Oh, so yeah hopefully everything sounds good i kind of moved my mic i don't know i think it'll work out pretty well so i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about some cool stuff that i got and then we're gonna dip into this weird project which i have to admit i'm not really big on accepting repair work for oem boards um mostly because it's not something i can really estimate the cost of because i have no real idea how much time it's gonna take especially for something like this but I think it was kind of important to take on at least a job like this, or I do think it is important to take on a job like this every now and then, just so that, just so that I can like, you know, say, hey, um, this is what you can expect if you have an OEM that you need to repair or whatever. I think, yeah, I don't know, we're gonna do it. So, um, if we finish this thing super early, like it's super simple, or if it's completely hosed and can't be fixed because I haven't plugged it in at all, um, then we'll move on and we'll do a big switch macro pad or I'll probably let you guys decide if you would prefer to do the like 2% the milk uh, macro pad instead. I don't really care which. I need to build both at some point. So, and they're mine. So that's what we'll move on to if we can't can't progress from this but we will definitely be checking this thing out and we'll inspect this interesting wood cased uh full size so i know that that kind of thing appeals to a lot of you guys i don't know i'm willing to check it out anyway what's up racing giraffe how you doing hopefully you're having fun so i'm gonna show off this stuff little little mail call what's up tefram how you doing cannon keys not a sponsor, but love those guys for sending stuff like this. If uh, if Upas ever watches this, I just want to call out. I love that at one point <laughs> you allowed me to order a desk mat with a key set. And then you'd hold on to them and ship them all at once because I really don't like paying like $17 in shipping. It may not be 17, I don't know, but it's a lot. 15, 13, 17, I don't care, whatever it is. I really don't like paying that much on something that costs $20. Like that hurts. And you're already gonna ship me the key set. Comes in the same size box no matter what. The desk mat fits in there. Yeah. Um, I know he doesn't do that anymore though. Will not allow you to buy that. So if you're ever watching this Upas, please, please, please. Please go back. I know you don't want to warehouse all those things, but it's a lot of shipping cost. It really makes me consider not jumping in on desk mats, pretty much. Like your sales, I I would bet, will go up quite a lot, even though you'll have to warehouse them. Anyway, um, jumping right into it. Anybody else get peaches and cream? GMK peaches and cream. Love this peach right here. Love that. Look at that. Look at how awesome that is. Huh. Huh. Okay. 
we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do the dust mat first no 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 we're gonna do the great wave dust mat first right so the great wave dust mat pretty cool pretty cool you say no to gmk oh no <laughs> what do you mean tefram why do you say no to gmk like overall do you not like gmk caps do you not like Cherry Profile. What is it about GMK? Jonas Max, what's up, man? I saw what you had to say earlier. Yeah, we're gonna be looking at this weird wood cased keyboard today. Um, so, you know, be ready to check that out. Do you remember the shirts that had those logos? No, I don't. Was there a no GMK logoed shirt? That's outrageous. Okay, so. We're gonna go to the overhead view. Get this uh, Rukia off the desk. We'll look at the Great Wave. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think this is a cool desk mat. I do. I, uh, I might actually rock this on my desk for a little while. It's pretty good. I don't know if, how I feel about it having this massive Canon Keys logo on it. Um, I probably would prefer it not to have that because, you know, kind of add is this like tempted to like cover it up <laughs> with something, you know what I mean? Like literally stick a sticker on it or something or glue something down to it because, uh, no, I don't want that. I, I mean, I like cannon keys a lot, obviously. I just don't want my desk to be a uh, walking, uh, walking advertisement for canning keys but i do really love the mat it does look really nice all right yeah me too i'm like totally gonna rock this on a desk i just may have to figure that other part out um so the next desk mat i think i like more i haven't even pulled it out of the package you guys are literally seeing it for the first time but i know what it looks like um obviously from the the group buy for it and i know a lot of people already have this desk mat because again they ordered theirs separate uh you do not like the sound profile shape or angle you used to use alternative layouts so you would like to buy extra sets for the profile to be consistent not just cost effective for me or just not cost effective hmm like you need the 40s kits or stuff like that oh you'd have to buy like a whole extra base kit that's intense yeah i could see not wanting that so what so what sets do you like then oh, oh. okay yeah this is annoying the a6000 uh is gonna get replaced i don't know when but it's definitely happening uh sorry about all that gonna turn autofocus off on that for right now um i like the sound pretty well um i like the shape and the angle um i guess what i have a problem with with gmk sets is the pricing like vendors overcharge for them i mean i want them to make their money but this is injection molded plastic guys like should not be that expensive not in the quantities we're ordering Oof, look at that guys this is the lewd one look at this how ridiculous is that look at that <laughs> i like that what's up no no kb how you doing man yeah it's not cost effective for anyone you're right I love this one. This is such an awesome set. <laughs> I love the art right here. The like little pucker around the peach pit. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Such a ridiculous fucking desk mat. <laughs> I'm happy I got it though. That being said, you're waiting on four sets. Yeah, I'm waiting on at least four sets. <laughs> it's probably more. 
Um, shit, I'm waiting on two sets of, um, of, I'm waiting on two of more than one set, if that makes sense. Like, where I got in on more than one base kit. Okay. Okay. Like, uh, Black Lotus I bought two of. What else did I buy two of? Uh, I can't really think of it. I know, some. Peachy, peachy, peach. So cute. Yeah, so we're going to move these off to the side. Factory moves. Oh, no. Down there. And then we're going to look at this. So a lot of people are kind of bitching about this. Um, you bought four Tai Hao. Kind of like them. I like Tai Hao just fine. I really do. For the price, they're amazing. I have a bunch of Thai house sets. Also, they make Alps stuff, which is awesome. Um, here's an example. Here's uh, another example. These are on something. I have some cherry ones. I have some more. I like Tai Hao a lot. These PBT Tai Hao's are really, really good. <laughs> Where does it say for the professional gamer? Does it say that? Oh, it does. Alps them. Because professional gamers use Alps. Duh. <laughs> okay. But back to peaches and cream our ultra premium super bougie ones Tepram, you still haven't tried alps Ooh, man let's fix that let's fix that hit me up sometime if you're looking to figure out how to make an alps build they're expensive but they're pretty nice so we'll pull this man roll off so a lot of people bitch and say that these are oversaturated blah 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 this camera does have a lot applied to it but it does not look as clean this camera and these colors this is what it's yeah this is fairly accurate they're a little more saturated looking in real life than in that picture or than in what you're seeing but not a lot uh, just a little so go back to the overhead though um i I like them just fine. Uh, I'm not actually. Fuck it. I'll pull them out. I'll pull one out and get it a lot closer for you guys to see. I mean, the legends look crisp. I'm not going to lie. Looks pretty good to me, guys. All right, all right. So everybody says they're a little too saturated. They are a little bit, but honestly, it doesn't bother me at all. Um, the accent colors are actually the only part that's a little too saturated for me. But you know what? Whatever. Whatever, man. Whatever. Deal with it. I think it looks beautiful. I'm definitely gonna rock it on some kind of a board. It definitely is the kind of set that needs to be on an e-white board, IMO. Um, that's, that's, I guess that's just my opinion, but camping on that board may get replaced. I don't have any other e-white boards in my possession or coming. Um, Maybe it'll, maybe it'll go on uh, something else. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not that, I'm not that worried about it though. So we're gonna 
slide this right in here. I'm happy that they sent it in the OG um, plastic trays because I love the OG plastic trays myself. I think they're fucking awesome. And uh, should definitely be using those all the time. Yeah, let's get the old school. I, I just, I'm mad that they got rid of this packaging. I'm mad about it. Are you mad, bro? Are you mad? TSC, thank you so much for that sub. That tier one for nine months coming in solid. All right. So uh, from here, we're gonna move straight into that wood case board. Uh, I think that's, it's pretty important for you guys to check this out. So the quality is definitely not what we're used to looking at here, guys. Um, I think it's funny. Don't go over the edge. I need you. Sorry, my USB-C cable. <laughs> I think it's funny how much hate they got for the old trays and now the new one. Uh, I never hated on the old trays. I like them. They're kind of a pain in the ass, but I like them way more than the... Honestly, I'll tell you what. If I ever run a keycap set, if I ever run a JTK or an Infinity key or anything Cherry profile, even GMK, I am going to insist that we get JTK trays like for every base kit. I don't even care. It's just going to be a requirement because those trays are garbage. The new ones, I mean, like 8008. turn that air conditioner actually down it's getting cold in here can't make anyone happy i know right well i'll tell you what this this keyboard may make you happy if you want full size and you like wood cases um now i know these have shown up on drop a couple times um i'll keep my eye out uh for a couple of you like jonas max i don't know if you're still in here but if you are, I know this is the kind of thing that would probably make you happy. Now, there are some issues with this board, obviously. Why we're, why we're gonna, why we're gonna have to fix it. Um, so this is a hot swap board, the south facing hot swap. Um, but that being said, it's probably, it's probably pretty, probably looks really nice. So we'll turn it on real quick, or we'll plug it in at least and see what happens. Oh, oh, we got some LED action going. Um, so I know that a couple of the hot swap uh, sockets popped off. So that's one of the issues with it. Um, looking at it right now, it actually looks fairly separated, the plate and the PCB. So I expect a lot of stuff to not really work. Apparently the socket, the USB-C connector is loose, but it seems to be working for right now. Um, so we're we're gonna dive in right now. You want to make your own, yeah? And see, Tefram, honestly, if you were gonna make one, if you were gonna get a wood case, I would suggest making your own. I think it is totally possible. Um, like get an OEM keyboard and take the dimensions, figure out exactly what plate and PCB like what it looks like and then yeah yeah so this is really the deal right it is a quality control fail a bunch of these screws are missing and customer actually said that um a bunch of them were missing when they got them or they popped right out I don't have any in my guess what you're holding in your hand I am red jive uh I'm not gonna guess that on stream <laughs> joking with you man <laughs> what are you holding in your hand? Why don't you enlighten us? Um, yeah, so quality control fail basically on this. You hold a single switch to rule them all. Uh, 
Psychos? Brown Alps. How now, Brown Alps? Oh, shit. Yes. Nice, dude. I'm so happy that it arrived. Um, thank the previous customer. Honestly, like, he was a nice dude to cut one free. I didn't have a spare gat ink that was just in plain condition laying around to send, man. Yeah, no problem, man. <clears throat> customer donated Switch. I donated the shipping, but I'm happy that you got what you got. Uh, what you needed, honestly. I really, really am. Um, yeah, so... So here we go, wood case, right? So, first problem I see, it uses tiny Phillips screws with tiny, tiny heads, which means these wood screws are gonna be very small diameter. I would say that that's probably a problem. Some of these screw holes might actually be stripped. We got three corners attached. Um, obviously the bottom piece doesn't fit in that well, but that's not that big of a deal because you're not gonna see that, right? Hey man, no problem. Ooh, okay, maybe there's inserts, because these are machine screws. Yeah, there's probably standoffs or something. Installed. There's no way these would hold tension in wood. They're way tiny, with way uh, steep thread pitch. Like, really, 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 really fine. Um... So also there's some warping on this bottom plate, which I guess is, you know, par for the course. It's a long, thin piece of wood. It kind of isn't that surprising. Uh, it came with decent bump ons. I like that. Um, so obviously this is a milled, uh, like with a, with a router or something case. Um, yeah, it has the inserts, which is good. I don't know if the case itself is warped. It does appear to be a very slight bit warped. Probably not enough to be that that uh, that critical. Um, yeah. So, so there's a daughter board, and the customer said that the that the um, specifically said that the connector was loose, and wasn't able to define whether the daughter board was the part that was loose, or if it was the connector itself. And we're gonna take a look. I know he sent a video of a bunch of stuff. I just don't recall all of the details. Um, oh, so these are wood screws. Self-tapping wood screws. We're going to put all these screws that we do have in here because we don't want to lose them, right? So there's a daughter board with a little connector deal. We're gonna pull that guy out. Um, I'm guessing that it's the daughter board that's a little loose and there's not a lot we're gonna be able to do about that. Yeah, the connector itself is definitely not loose feeling, which is good. I don't see any looseness, it's not wiggling. Solder joint is all good. Apparently, it looks good. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call that good, right? So we're gonna leave this on top of here, right? We're just gonna look at kind of what's going on. So this trace obviously came free. Um, the trace between that diode and here is still actually hanging on by the little microfilament. The portion of the copper layer of the PCB peeled up and it's hanging on there, right? So we're gonna have to figure out how to glue this sucker down. And what we're actually gonna do for the, just so you guys know, um, there's a couple different ways you can handle this. One would be to actually um, sand down the little pad a little bit um, and try and glue it with super glue down to this. Super glue is a little brittle, so eventually it'll pop off. So what we're what we're going to do is is we're going to um, make sure that the wires that should be attached here because it delaminated this other pad too. What's up, Recon Gaming? How you doing, man? Um, I'll, I'll talk about that in a sec. Wood screws, yeah, wood screws not a good idea. Honestly, it should have inserts like here. Yeah, and no KB, you're totally right. That's exactly what they should have done. It should have inserts and it should be machine screws. 
Um, there is a little bit less meat, but they do make smaller inserts. Um, there isn't less meat. There's exactly the same amount. That would have been the way to do it. They just didn't. Good to see you, Reekin. How you doing, man? I love this community. I love that a lot of you guys just pop in, you hang out, regulars. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. For anybody that's not a regular, that isn't following or subbed or whatever, consider going up here and uh, hitting that, that follow thing and let's stay in touch. Uh, oh, and by the way, earlier I called out TSC's uh, resub. It's actually 14 months. It's just a nine month streak. Tired from work, trying to save up for some parts. Parts for what, man? For keeps? If so, what keeps? Did anybody get in on any cool group buys? Because there are some really cool group buys that either just happened or are still happening. I got in on two this month. It's pretty hefty. Um, both boards. I haven't gotten in on any key sets yet this month, though there is one or two that I'm going to. Um, but what I did get in on, I'll uh, I'll pop it up. I'll pop it up and show you guys. Boom. Let's talk about this for one sec, right? So live group buys. Um, let's go to boards first. So heavy metal keyboards, I got in on that. And then Austin round two. I wasn't sure I was gonna do Austin round two. Um, you know, because it's expensive and I have an Austin round one, but it's a uh, full size compact. Um, they're pretty pricey because they're so big. Uh, I think they were, I want to say with the extra PCB in case there's ever a problem, it was about 600 bucks um, shipped. But look at that. And I got in on this red one right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looks beautiful. The one I have already is gray. So and I have two of them. Uh, I probably won't get rid of it or anything like that because I really like it. But, you know, it's a thing. And I know TSC got in on one as well. She got gray, I believe. Anyway, so that and then the other thing I got in on and I didn't get the 65%, although I thought about it. Um, I got in on and this is still running, by the way. I get got in on the HMKB95, which is um, 1800 compact. One of my favorite layouts of all time. It's smaller than 1800 if you guys are familiar with that. So it's kind of nice. Um, and I got stainless with a brass plate. So mine will look like that kind of. I thought about getting in on this gray or black. But that's the one I got in on. All right. All right. Thunder Viking. How you doing, man? Uh, waiting on your GMK botanical caps. Just joined PBT Islanders. PBT Islanders looks really good, and I may have to jump in on that before it ends. Um, oh, you found out about moldable glue. Just ordered some. Try and give that a try for repair slash modding. Are you talking about like Suguru? I think there's a product called Suguru that is like a moldable rubber cement type thing. Um... It's technically like a two-part epoxy, I think. Um, anyway. Uh, how much was the heavy metal in freedom dollars? I think it was 300 and very low change. Like 310 or 320, I think, no KB. All in. Pretty sure, somewhere around there. It was expensive. I mean, it's expensive, but it's really, really cheap for a GB board because that thing is actually just stamped steel that is press braked into shape. Um, so it's very inexpensive for what it is, right? Anyway, moving on, right? Um, I would love to hear what you guys got in on. Thunder Viking obviously told me his. Um, Reken, you said, yep, got a Mark II, need some parts. Haven't decided on what key set switches, etc. A Mark II. Do you mean a KBD 8X Mark II? Hmm. Hmm. 
Or do you mean you got in on a group buy? Yeah. You wanted the Austin so bad but couldn't drop the cash. I feel you, man. It was very expensive. It's a very expensive board, but it's very nice. It's actually not very expensive, right? There are boards that are clearly, clearly more. But it, it's pretty pricey for a regular group buy. Also, sold out in just over a minute. Freaking KBD 8X. KBD 8X Mark II is a great board, man. I have one. I think it's pretty, I think it's pretty neato Cheeto. I have the polycarb one and I have the matching pad, which is kind of cool. Um, anyway, so, so that one is delaminated. So we're hundred percent sure that's popped off. This one is delaminated, popped off. And I don't see the, uh, the part, which is going to be a problem. Customer definitely expected you to send the part. Is it loose in here? Cause if it's loose in here, oh no, oh no. So we aren't going to be able to fix this. Um, because I don't have the original piece. I will go get his box and look in it. I don't know if you're in chat, customer. it's in here that hurts I don't think I have any Kiowa hot sockets yeah so I mean we'll we'll be able to do some we'll be able to test it we'll repair this one we'll pop all of it out we'll get it as prepped as it can be for that one repair uh, and I'll just have to repair that part later um which is kind of unfortunate I'm being honest. Open your inner reeb. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get it all apart. We're gonna test it all, and we're gonna we're gonna repair just this one, so you guys can kind of see what we're doing, and then we're gonna move on to uh, macro pad. It looks like. Um, unfortunate. Yeah. So there's a plate screw missing here. Another plate screw missing here. Another one missing here. Looks like maybe one missing there. Yeah, so there are a few missing screws. No, that's not a screw that's missing. That is a screw that's missing. Hmm. Okay. So we know we're going to need a couple more uh, Kaiwa hot sockets, but I will show you guys how to replace this one. Um, and then if we have a lot of extra time, we will jump straight into, um, you know, doing something else that's fun. A little macro pad action. I need that brush. So if you guys don't have one of these magnetizers for your little screwdrivers, this thing is super useful. Super, super useful. Open your inner weave. Maybe just ran across the GB post on it. The GB post on which? Oh, am I going to get the... Uh, Query, query, GB. Send, uh, post the link, man. I feel like I know what that is. I feel like I've seen that a bunch before. Um, the query. Hmm. Yeah, you're gonna have to post the link, man. There you go, Tefram. Thank you. Appreciate that, buddy. Appreciate it. Must be 18 plus to view this. Well, I'm not gonna push this one on there right away. Uh, I do not see, that is, that just takes me straight to Reddit. Why is this a not safe for work at GB? 108 full set with all mods. Dude, what is this? Kiriri picks. Okay, I see. Wow, that is an outrageous key set. Um, 
That is an outrageous looking G set. How much is it? It's gonna be 80 bucks, excluding shipping and fees. I mean, I'm not really all about it, but maybe I'll jump in on it. It's XDA, which is not something I'm interested in. I don't know, man, it's weird. Disco Crocodile, what's up, man? Um, in a rush. Hey, man, I appreciate you stopping by to say hey. I do, I do. Um, today's kind of a low-key chill stream where we're just repairing... Well, we were gonna repair this. It's gonna turn into a building a macro pad um, stream. <laughs> but nice to see you, man. I hope that everything goes really well. I believe you might be streaming. I hope everything goes well with that, if that's what's going on, man. Or whatever else has got you in a rush. If it's not that. Wow, so these are all loose, which is kind of scary to me. There's one of the missing ones. What is holding this down? That one looks like it wasn't loose. This one's loose. Dude, I... This is frighteningly loose. <laughs> like, none of these are anchored down. Okay, well, it's actually loose then. Um, I think it's funny as shit, man. I don't know, I could see getting it. Like, just as a joke. So, the bottom, the bottom pieces do have inserts. Though some of them are not pushed in all the way. So basically, this is a really cool looking board. Just QC is not 100% there. If you're into woodworking um, and you have the opportunity to get one of these, this might actually become a project that you could like fix up and make the way you want it to be. Like pull these inserts out, screw something down in there, yank it out, drill the hole out the correct way, get better inserts, etc. It's all totally doable. Just time and money, put inserts in there instead of self-tapping wood screws. Yeah, it looks like these side inserts are actually missing. <laughs> like they came out, weren't glued in all the way. It's a beautiful case. Um, actually, a bunch of the inserts came out. Wow, hurts. Hurts my soul, guys. Hurts my soul. Yeah, like these are loose. So there needs to be some glue that goes in to fix those. So I've got some repair work to do on this outside of what we're gonna probably handle just on this stream. Um, but I'm gonna hit up the customer first to make sure they know what needs to be done and they're happy with it. Um, we also need to order some Kaiwa hot sockets because I was expecting them to send the parts that were missing. Um, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe they said they didn't have them. Now I feel bad, but that's okay. Um, so, Tefram, hilarious set. Uh, oh yeah, quite a meme set. Yeah, of course it is. And I'm not really a weeb, but that's kind of why it would be funny to get that set. They said they had 1500 made. Don't know how many of each though. Wood is cool. Wood is really, really cool. Dramatic woodchuck. Hey, what up, Jeff Leopard? How you doing, man? Yeah, so we're like playing with this wood drop board and uh, it's kind of a sad story. The PCB and plate are fairly separated. So something that I like to do um, to ensure everything works is start putting the PCB together while the end plate and pushing each individual switch in while holding the Kaiwa socket um, so that it doesn't pop off like this one and this one did. Um, that looks like a pretty much a necessity for this board. Um, we're actually gonna, we're gonna pop this off, right? So we're gonna pop that off. We're gonna pull all these switches out and we're gonna fix that one at least. So you guys kind of know how that, yeah, the pads got ripped off on two of the sockets, Tefram. And that can happen on boards like on hot swap boards. It's one of the reasons I don't like hot swap boards 
one of the reasons I agreed to take this repair job on, or at least investigate it for a customer, so they can kind of understand what's up. Because they want they wanted a wood case and they want a full size, so all of this appeals to them. I'm happy that they were able to find a, a board that they want, frankly. I'm just sad that, unfortunately, when you find OEMs that you like, um, sometimes they just aren't quite what you want. And this would have been an expensive uh, proposition. I don't know how much these wood cases cost, but I'm guessing it was at least like 130 or 140 bucks. And then he bought Securios, right? So 104 Securios means you got to buy 110. So that would have been uh, 110 bucks plus shipping and stuff from Zeal. So look at 120 bucks plus for just the switches. And they're just for this board because this board doesn't have the PCB leg holes, which means he would have had to have clipped all of these Securios with the flush mount clips. And he did not use flush mount clips. He used regular ones, which means that these won't seat that well. So that's another problem that will need to be fixed. So one of the reasons that I usually just don't take work like this is because it's impossible to really estimate, right? The cost. Like I prefer kits. If you can send me a kit board or you can send me a whole board that's already made and all you want is a rebuild and it's a functional thing already, then that's what we'll do. Um, I will take stuff like this, but only when people seem like they kind of understand um, and are willing to be fluid about the price where price isn't really a big concern, which usually isn't the case with somebody who bought an OEM board. Somebody who bought an OEM board like this though, OEM board, like this though, um, that, that's usually gonna be the case, right? This person had to have dropped a fair bit of money on the parts to get this the way that he wanted it. Obviously knew what he wanted. And it's just, it's unfortunate that the quality control can't get him what he needs. Um, Jeff Leopard, man, it's so good to see you in here. Um, it's funny because I just received a, I was thinking about you a little bit earlier. I just received another HB CP, somebody else's, um, for a build. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm basically gonna need to, uh, I'm gonna need to build it, right? But like, I was just like, man, I, I wonder, if any of the other people that jumped in on the on the um, the proto got a full got a regular GB one and what the sound profile difference is, because I haven't had an opportunity to really mess with it that way. And I knew you might know if you had jumped in on one. I didn't know. <clears throat> so I'm curious, have you played with a regular GB? HBCP. Why does this not want to come out? Okay, well, we'll ignore that one for now. And if you have, how's the sound difference? I would guess that it would be a little thump, thumpier than the one that the uh, Proto one, because the internal case volume is a little lower, like a little bit more of a low pitched thump. Thock, a little more muted. Well, I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna find out in the next couple weeks. I probably need to do another post for orders. I mean, I have a couple weeks, like a week and a half worth of customer boards left to do at my normal uh, speed and with my normal schedule, but like, I'm considering rearranging and moving around my days and stuff. So I've been reluctant to do another post to drum up more business. Um, a little bit has trickled in and I'm waiting on some of my own personal boards and customer boards. So I don't know, maybe I'll just hold off a little bit. Let my queue get a little empty before I post or basically fully empty and then have to work on some of my own stuff. I guess I have at least a couple weeks now. Oof. He 
you have played with one, your buddy bought one. The sound difference is there for sure. It's hard to say though, different switches. You would say ours are more muted. The other ones resonate a little more with that extra space, not drastic, but noticeable. Yeah, it's not a huge amount of difference in space. So it's not surprising that it's not drastic. Um, like I would have guessed that it wouldn't be super dramatic. Um, in fact, it might even be kind of nice in some ways, depending on what switches you're using. Like if you're using linears, it might actually be quite a lot nicer, especially if you're using something like an FR4 plate or a half plate or clickies. Like if you're using clickies, you probably want it to have that extra. So like I'm planning on using, well, I'm not 100% sure, but I was thinking about using NOS White Alps. Okay, so there's all those switches. Okay, that one came out that time. So, I don't know what's holding this PCB to the plate at this point. Oh, screw here, screw here, screw here. So there's four screws. That's what's holding it. Okay, and then this one fully popped off now, which is fine. I'm gonna leave that up there. Finally broke down and paid for more browns, more uh, Alps browns. Oof, dude, I'm probably gonna have to do the same. I'm being honest. I mean, I won't have to do the same depending on. I don't need that many. I need like 11. <laughs> I need like 11 brown alps. Um, well, if you have extra, let me know. But I'm sure you probably didn't buy a ton of extras. Um, by my calculations, I think I have a spreadsheet of like requirements and stuff. I think I'm short like literally like 11 brown alps. From a, if I wanted to build um, HBCP with with that. Which I could easily do. Uh, that's only if I don't want to desolder something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you need like 98, basically. Well, let me let me know if you got extras, man. Straight up. Considering buying like another 5140. Okay, this should pop right off now, which it does. Great. Um, Don't see any lube. I actually do see a tiny little bit of uh, super lube, but it's only in the little um, insert hole. It's not on the insert. It's not between the insert and the guide. So this this is probably a fairly rattly board. I'm gonna set that on there right now. Okay. So now that we've got this. We're gonna we're gonna plug this back in and we're gonna test out all the different all the different switch positions with switch hitter. Figure out if that actually works. switch hitter uh, maybe not our switch hitter switch hitter closed up oh, there it is go to a 104 layout what's the actual name for this keyboard I don't know I don't know I had a link at one point I think um, Command codes verified. Recon gaming man thanks for the five bits appreciate that buddy 
Um, pretty X or ZZXCC, ZZXXCC, 18 minutes ago you followed. I apparently missed that. Thank you so much. Anybody who isn't already following or subbed, you know, go ahead and consider uh, popping up there and making that happen. I would appreciate it. All right, so we've got one of the indicators are on, obviously. Um, let me pop in a, uh, a good set of tweezers. Appreciate those bits, man. Appreciate those bits. All right. Oof, that one opens calculator. So that does a job. That one turns up volume. This one probably turns it down. I don't know what that one does. But it turns an indicator LED on when it's on. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that. Like watch right there. <laughs> Reekin Gaming, thanks for the 500 bits, man. You meant to send 500, but didn't actually realize they were ones. Feels bad. It's all good, dude. You're good. So I don't know what that is, but it obviously works. That one turns on a different indicator and it works. Oh yeah, that was volume up. This is volume down. That's a mute. Got it. Okay. Anyway, um, that turns on an indicator, but I don't, again, know what it does. That's scroll lock or locks a layer on. Whatever it is, it works. That obviously works because the light turns on. Oh. It helps if I'm actually on this. Okay, so let's pause. That's scroll lock, great. I was like, they reprogrammed this thing to something else? Print screen. Okay, we're just gonna go down the line now. These should all be pretty standard things. I love that all the indicators turn on when I hit them. So, so obviously, I can tell that they're working. Kind of nice. The num numpad or numlock on rather. We're just going to handle the rest of the nav cluster and numpad. Get those done. Nav cluster, F row, all that stuff works. Did I see Dolch round five today? Are you joking? Ooh, post that link, Jeff. Man, I'm ready for that. Hip, hip, hooray for Regan Gaming. No joke, man. Yeah, um, post the link, man. I think that's actually kind of awesome. I didn't, I didn't realize that that was a thing. I didn't know that that posted today, but I'm super down because I don't have a GMK Dolch. Um, Oh, and OG Space Keys. Who? So I do have an OG Space Keys kit. I don't know if it's the same thing. Update one pertains. There's been a slight change in the plans. Be preferred uh, to a buy run by High C Piney, blah, 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 is round two. But at the same time, that which is perfect. Cool. GMK Dolch base plus extension will be handed by listed vendors. Project keyboards, awesome. Can't wait. Um, dude, that's awesome. Hold on one second. I will open this for you guys. 
boom. Boys and girls. Look at that. Look at that. We are definitely jumping in on that. Timeless Classic. Timeless, timeless Classic. Oh, and comes with reds. Oh, man. I love this. Super all extension. Definitely getting the extension. I want those windowed keycaps right there. Um, extra B. Oh, man. This is a great set. This is a great base kit. So, Tefram, uh, funny thing. Uh, no, not really an Opera user. So, I... Um, <laughs> I use Opera, Firefox, and Chrome on this computer. Um, basically, it's so that I can have um, it's so that I can have different uh, windows open to share with you guys, and ones not to. Um, so, like Chrome, I all my logins and stuff are on. Like all my user logins for things are on, so I can get to Google Docs and things that I need when I'm building. But then Firefox, all I do with Firefox is um is this right is just 10 fast fingers for you guys um and then opera obviously to uh to uh you know look at stuff like this to show you guys stuff this is an amazing looking set guys i am really stoked about this tentative gb start date august 2020 i don't know how much i like that given that it's a half a year before we'll actually get them in um to anywhere and that's not us getting them in that's the vendors getting them in so realistically we're looking at like this time next year before they show up um, but you know it is what it is with gmk right now so it's cc n9 l9 u9 CPCR. okay perfect so um yeah i'm totally down I love that it has the the uh, UK ISO stuff right here. Um, that's really, really good. Um, yeah, and I, I couldn't be happier about this. It also has a page up, page down that are row appropriate. Just where I want them. Oh, no, no, sorry. It doesn't have a home that's row appropriate. Uh, yep, it does not. Oh, well, nothing does ever, so. That's that's just kind of life, I guess. Oh, row three. Uh, it does have a home and a row four end. So yes, it does have what I want. Aha! No, I really need a home. row three, actually. Sorry, a row two home. That's what I need. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, boys and girls, doesn't matter. So let's uh, get rid of that and we'll go back to this. Um, it does sound like a good buy though. Definitely jumping in on it. It uses row five, yeah. I didn't even see that. Row five is freaking crazy aggressive, but I'm down. Icon plus text two, literally perfect. So many sets. Yeah, you're right, man. I have a bunch too. Okay, so now we're on the bottom row, right? So let's uh, let's, let's get rolling with this. So space worked. So we're missing Alt. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, cool. So this must be a function layer. We can see that it actuates because he's got the raindrop thing turned on. So I'm not going to worry about it because we know it works. Uh, 
Come on, I want it off, not on. There we go. I don't want my caps lock actually turned on. Just want to make sure the button works or the switch position works. Oop, that one's loose right there. So what, what switch is this? That's Y. So Y is popping off. Basically, Y has delaminated, but it isn't uh, inoperable right now. Oh, that's all of them. So Y, V, and uh, Y, V, and it looks like Alt, right? Our problem. So let's uh, let's figure out where we're going here, right? So it looks like these are on the same. So right here and right here are good. So let's find, do we have a little jumper up here? We do. Perfect. So I should be able to jump this right here. So this, this trace right here to here and get alt. So what we will do is We'll put this down, we'll bridge from there to there. So we'll bridge from this guy to the other socket, right? <clears throat> We're gonna, I think we are gonna apply a tiny little bit of glue onto this just to kind of hold it in place. But every time you replace that switch, you'll have to take the whole thing apart and hold the socket and pop the switch in from the top. What's up, Liquid Sky Design? How you doing, man? Good to see you, man. Uh, yeah, don't worry, man. A little late. Wednesday is kind of a more relaxed one, especially this time, because we're doing a repair job. Um, we don't have an extra Kaiwa hot socket, so that's something that we won't be able to fix tonight. But we do have one, um, the one, one of the ones that popped off, and we will fix it, and I'll kind of show you guys how that works. The pads did just straight up delaminate, which is really sad. Uh, also, NA is Project Keyboard, right? Anyone buy from them before? Uh, yeah, I bought stuff from them before. I bought uh, Kepler. Um, I've not yet received it, but he's been really good about giving updates, even though there have been a lot of delays. Uh, and people have actually started getting shipping notifications, so stuff is going out. And I've met Josh from Project Keyboards a bunch of times in real life, and 159 is his name. Very nice dude. Very nice dude. All right, so what we're gonna do is, right, we're literally gonna bridge from here to there, bridge from there to there, maybe more specific. We are gonna bridge from this Kaiwa hot socket to there, and from this pad on it to this pad on this other one, and we're gonna glue it down, right? Also, I think uh, our Y was loose. Is that what we said? Come on, where was the loose one? I know you're over here, there it is. So that pad has delaminated, but obviously it's still connected. So before that becomes a problem, we're actually gonna bridge that to that. Try and squeeze a little bit of super glue under there. Um, I am gonna have to go for one second and go find some super glue. Sorry, boys and girls. Sorry. Where were you again? Jeez, man. So hard to find. I'll leave that right there so I know where it is. Uh, I'll read this first and then we'll then we'll do it. Um, yeah, you've been happy with them too. They're actually semi-local to you. Want to go to their HQ before all this happened. Yeah, he's a super nice guy. I highly recommend you guys do check him out. Um, he's really nice. He's got some cool boards that he's made, some cool products. Anybody who's ordered a Sirius before got theirs and a ton of people got theirs, no drama. 
Um, I think it's a safe, it's a safe vendor. Obviously a safe vendor. Anyway, I will return one moment. All right, boys and girls. Definitely 159 is a great dude. I agree. I really do. So I've got some E6000 here. I don't know if this one has been opened before or not. It has. Okay. So we're going to take one of our little applicators. I actually don't want to use one of these. I have some more with a slightly different shape. will work better. What are the famous last words? So I want the little white ones that are in here because they have a longer um, applicator tip on them that's narrower. So I want to be I want to be really clear. What we're not doing here is applying this to apply significant structural rigidity for repeated uh, socket insertion, right? This is literally made to hold it in place um, so it doesn't wobble around. Once things are inserted in there, um, it, it will pop off if you try to apply pressure um, from the switch pins without carefully, um, without carefully treating this in the first place, right? Like you need to push on the socket Apply pressure as you push the switch in. Oh, I'll be back. No joke. Very famous last words, in fact. Okay, so that we've done that, great. We've got our little applicator out. Very happy with that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this little, um, we're gonna pull this out. Normally we would do a solder mat because we're gonna be doing a little soldering, but the reason we're using this mat this time is because there's going to be super glue and I don't want to get super glue all over my silicon uh, solder mat. This, I could scrape it right off with a knife. No harm, no foul. Okay, so the other thing is we're about to heat cycle this a lot, right? So we're going to add a ton of heat with a soldering iron. What we don't want to go do is put the glue on and then solder. That's important because... Um, that's important because we're going to do our trace repair before before any of that other stuff. Um, these are not solid core wire. This is solid core wire, though. All right. So. So let's get some uh, some stuff to do trace repair. We're going to use a couple different colors here. We're going to use white and blue. Doesn't really matter what we do. I just want to consistently use different colors for different sides of the switch pins, just to make it a little easier in the future to notice. This is way more than enough wire. This also is way more than enough wire. Great, boys and girls. Uh, why did I put that up there? I'll put that up there. 
All right. <clears throat> so we've got our strippers. We've got all the things we kind of need, our cutters, right? So this one, we know what we're going to do. This one, we know where we're going to where we're going to join the traces also. But I am going to test real quick and make sure, right? That I'm OK. Ooh, and it is intermittent. Actually, it looks like so it's good that we caught that. Okay, so is it you or I thought it was why? Okay, it was no. Come on, man. What was loose here? It was you that was loose. Okay. It actually looks like it's not intermittent. I think it works fine. Oh, it is. It doesn't matter. We're going to repair it anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our iron and fire it up. Um, the famous last words were watch this. No, it's hold my beer. <laughs> Those are the famous last words. Okay. So we're going to measure our kind of like little difference in distance. So we're going to use white wire for the diode side. Um, Right, this is a tiny, tiny, tiny wire. These are, I want to say, 20, what gauge are these? Why did it not say what gauge these are? I don't know what gauge they are. Pretty small. I'm going to say that they're 22 gauge first, just to test. And that seemed to be about right. 22, 24 seemed to strip them just fine. Right. We'll get our... Another thing we're going to do, just to make our lives a little easier, we're going to get some of these little doodads. See if that's tripped them enough. That should work. Okay. So the right way to do this, guys, um, is to fire up your iron, let it get to temp, which no flex, but luckily with this iron is super quick. Still can't recommend it any more than I already do. Getting a decent iron, whatever you choose. Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to tin these. We're going to tin these little tips right here, right? You see the little tiny wire. It's real hard. The contrast is not super high. There it is. It's a little better. So we're literally going to, right, tin the tip of our iron. Hold heat on there. Tin the, tin the wire. Tin this wire.
Clean that off, right? The important thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna retin this. The reason we're doing that is because there's already some lead free solder on there. Right, and we're gonna, which is maybe not the best thing ever to do. So we retin that one. Right, so now that they're tinned well, um, thank you, Half Tech. Appreciate that. Right, we're going to make sure they're bent into the shape that we want. Um, Half Tech, thanks so much for that follow, man. I really appreciate that. Anybody who isn't already following should absolutely consider doing that thing. We really appreciate it. It does help. And then jump on to our other socials and consider following us there. Okay, so we float all that. Great. Right, now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take a little itty bitty pair of needle nose, something a little more solid than that. Um, also, there's also, what does this do? What does what do? Racing giraffe, what does what do? Oh yeah, <laughs> famous last words, got it coach. All right, so we're gonna take our little bendy needle nose. I mean, it's super in there. I'm actually gonna give you guys quite a lot more zoom factor. there you go you can see I took our little wire tip and I bent it right there into that little socket right press it down in this is solid core wire so it will just kind of bend into place so we press that in there and now we're gonna flow that joint again. Um, if I could follow twice, I would, thanks man. Enhance, uh, I will show you guys after this. This would be an incredibly difficult thing to do under microvision, microscope. In fact, what we're gonna do here, is we're actually gonna hold this down Reflow all of that. Perfect. Okay, now this I will show under microscope so you guys can kind of understand what we're doing here. I need to get some of this out of the way first. To pull a microscope out. Okay, so here we go, guys. Here's what Microvision sees. As you can see right here we float our joint we float our joint right there because we pretend everything everything flowed right together pretty well right so now this side is delaminated so we're gonna glue under that pad because it's still a little loose if I'm not mistaken Ooh, it's not loose did the right one right we did well it does not appear to be loose now which is kind of scary a little bit. <clears throat> so there must have been part of that trace that was still there. 
either way, there's nothing to guarantee that this will stay on there very well. Um, what I was going to do was solder this joint probably to that one, because if I'm not mistaken, um, that actually is our, our U switch still. Or Y, whatever. Yeah, well, this isn't the loose one. It was definitely that one. Weird. Okay. Well, it's definitely on. But what I was going to do is bridge these two right here, right? Because what we would have gotten is that, right? So it would have actuated. Yeah, so I could put a little dab of glue, um, but now it's now it's pretty it's pretty well on there. I don't really know what the point of glue would be at this point. I could add a little bit around the edge so that it stays in place. Ooh, yeah, okay, might be. Yeah, actually, I bet what's holding it down. Yeah, it is. I'm not gonna fuck with it. What's holding it down is actually the the rigidity of that wire. So I am gonna run a little bit of glue just around the base here. Not much, right? Just add a little tiny additional stability. So I'm gonna take this E6000 industrial adhesive junk. Also gonna before we do any of that take this uh, right here and I'm gonna clean that off turn my fan off we're not accelerating how quickly this stuff dries Perfect, there we go. Okay, so we got a little bit of this. Um, no, they're just held on with solder. So usually the trace itself, no KB, um, is it's laminated on to the board, right? So the, the board is actually a laminated bit of, it's, it's called FR4 is what the material that the board is, the PCB itself is made out of, right? Which is actually just fiberglass that is sandwiched with um, copper on the sides, on the top and bottom surface. So we're adding a little bit of glue right there just to add a little bit more stability. Now, like I said before, the right way to do these in a, in a manner that protects the board's life uh, or that increases the life of these sockets is to <laughs> Instead of, okay. Instead of just, instead of just inserting the switches from the top is to hold the actual socket on the bottom to kind of prevent it from popping out, right? I don't know why I did the one next to it like an idiot, but whatever, that one's now got a little glue on there too. Gluing the wrong one down. That won't hurt though. We want these sockets to stay where they're at. Right, and this doesn't need to be, in fact, we don't want it to be conductive. So this glue kind of does a little job to hold it in place. Now, like I said, it's really important to note that this is not uh, this is not going to give a lot of structural rigidity. It's just going to kind of help it hold in place. You need to press your finger on the bottom of that while you snap it in. And you should be doing that anyway. Highly recommend that you guys do that every time. Every time. So we're gonna wipe this applicator off. 
Heck, we're gonna throw that applicator away. Okay, so now that one's in place, right? We need to get a new one for this. That's not gonna happen. And then we need to build new traces for this and solder it in place too. And this is gonna be a little bit easier. Uh, so the actual socket is what usually fails before they separate from the PCB. Uh, are the hot swap sockets? No, the, they usually delaminate. That's what actually fails on them most frequently. Yeah, I don't like hot swap because of these issues, frankly. Um, this is the biggest concerns. These are the biggest sets of concerns that I have with them. So I'm actually gonna try and do this trace repair under the scope. Um, oh man, that's gonna be really difficult. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna pop this off because I don't wanna short anything out, right? There we go. Okay, so that's the that's the one we want, right? So you can see how the itty bitty little copper trace used to be connected to there, but it came off and that's fine. We don't need it. We'll just pull it off, right? That little tiny piece of copper. So that's a piece of copper that was laminated to the board previously. Um. They're nice for trying switches, but that's about it. I agree, man. I mean, I understand why people do it. I really do. I just, I don't recommend it. Like just desolder them, get new PCBs. I don't know. It's just, it's an awful hassle in the long run. But I will say that Kaiwa hot sockets, which is what these are right here. These are actually the best ones. If you're going to do hot swap, this is the way to do it. Mill max is jank. Don't do those. Okay, so in any in any event, we're gonna need another section of wire, right? So I believe what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna figure that part out right there. And we're gonna give it a little clip. Little clipsy. Little clippy clipper. Right? And we're gonna take that little piece. Right, we're gonna strip it on the ends just like we did before. Thank you so much, Jerry A92, for that follow. I appreciate that. Anybody who who isn't already following, consider uh, going up here somewhere, hitting that follow button. It really helps. We really appreciate it. And uh, then we can stay in touch. The Monkey's Wrench. Thank you so much for that follow, man. I appreciate that. Okay, now we may not be stripping quite enough off this end. I believe we are not, but we'll find out. Uh, so, yeah. So one of those ends has to get a little bit shorter. And we're gonna go with the shorter of the two. No, we're actually gonna go with the longer of the two because That's the side that's gonna bend in. Right, so. So we kind of got that in place, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tin those. I'll kind of show you how that works. So <laughs> we take our iron, right? I like showing this off because I like you guys to understand what you're doing. You always tin all the things you're gonna, you're gonna solder. Right, so we take we take our iron, we take our solder, and we just tin the tip just a tiny little bit. So we got a little bit of solder on the tip itself. Oh, that was hard to see. Sorry. So now we've got a little bit of solder on that. <laughs> Sorry, boys and girls. Sorry. A little slippier than you think it is. Um, now we're gonna do the other side. Just the tip, the monkey's wrench. It's never just the tip. Don't worry, we'll get to the rest of it later. It's it's just the tip for now.
right? So now we got that tinned. Now, in this case, it's gonna be extra important to make sure that we tin the pads of the loose socket, right? And the reason we're doing that is because, well, aside from the obvious reasons, um, we're gonna remove the pad. I don't know if you guys can kind of see that. So that pad is trash. Um, so we're gonna just bury it in the wire mesh. That'll get rid of it, right? Tin the tip again. I'm gonna do the other side now. So we haven't tinned anything yet. We're just removing the trash. Or maybe not. I'm actually gonna pull that part out now. I'm gonna remove it from this side. All right. So we got that trash out of there, which is good. So we're getting rid of the remnants from the PCB itself that was on there, right? Place it. Okay. Now we're going to tin it with some leaded solder like we were about to anyway. And we're doing that because you tin all the things, but because it's going to remove oxidation layers that are on there, it's going to kind of make this thing a little bit more uh, feasible, what we're doing here, right? Like. Nothing is going to want to stick to it, right? So we're going to add a little bit more solder as we do that too. We got this wire right here now. So we're going to bend the longer side um, with these kinds of like wires, the little wire bendery dudes. And check the dimensions real quick. So you're wondering why the sheathing on this kind of got all twisted up and it's because it melted. Okay. So right, so right there, you can kind of already tell, right? It's going to fit in there. I think, come on. Okay. Don't worry. Super annoying, right? Okay, so that fits in. Then we've got this, that'll fit in there, and it'll go up to there. Which is kind of good. So I think we're I think we're where we want to be, roughly. Now we could add a little tiny piece of glue right in that middle section, which I think we're gonna do. Just to kind of make this easier. It's unfortunate because we're having to go through a lot of these applicators, but that's not that big of a deal. Ooh, so that monk or the monkey's wrench, go ahead and uh, type in exclamation HBCP. And I think you'll get a little, you'll get my explanation of it. Okay. If you're interested in my explanation of it.
Okay, so I did put a little tiny piece of glue in there. I'm gonna press it into place. the proto with camping on it uh so i had the proto with camping on it at uh i don't know i did have camping on it for a little while but then i put uh shoko on it and it's got it's had shoko on it for quite a while okay so what we're gonna do is Do something really funky and do this offhanded. <laughs> oh man, dorky, 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 offhanded comments. So it doesn't matter that 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 uh, she thing is wearing through. That stuff is not really that important. I don't stab myself though. Okay, we're just gonna pull that off now. Because it doesn't really matter. We are, however, going to reflow all of that in a second. So, what we're gonna do is. to the guy next to him. This time we're gonna use some blue wire. We want it to be able to loop in, right? So it's gonna have to curve around. Cut a little bit off each side, strip a little bit off each end. I guess you guys didn't see that, but you will. Now what we're gonna do is, right? We're gonna take this little wire you deal, and we're gonna curve it. This is gonna get real interesting. So we're gonna tin that side, but not the other first. And I'll show you why. We're gonna tin it before we solder it, but we're not gonna tin it but after or until after we've soldered this side on. All right, so we got some solder on there. Great. We already flowed this end, I think.
concrete. And we're gonna do this just to make sure that it all bridges well. Now that did melt all the way. It may look like a cold joint. I don't know 100% what you're looking at, but it, I swear it is good. Just go out of our way to show. That's true, right? Boom. Okay, perfect. Now we're gonna jump over to here. We're gonna curve that little guy in. But before we do all that, we're gonna curve him, then we're gonna tin it. Now I need to do this a little bit off camera just so that I can bend it appropriately. Sorry, boys and girls. Um, Nub So Fury, thank you so much for that. That awesome follow, I appreciate that, man. So now if you look, our little uh, thing hooks straight in there. Before we do all that, we're gonna pull it back up a little bit. And if you notice, it lifted, lifted that guy up, right? Now it's not in, there's a gap under it. So we're gonna tin it just like this, just right here. All right, then we're gonna tin the, uh, the pad underneath, which is going to be kind of hard to see from here, but try my best. Not melt the plastic. Okay, perfect. We're going to place it in place. So we know that there's some tin there. We're going to press it in where it needs to go. Harder now to fit into place. All right, so pressing it down, kind of pressing it into place. And as we flow it, it'll want to go in as long as we're able to mechanically move it. As long as we can heat it up enough, right? To get everything to flow. Which we can. in setback mode we cannot <laughs> not without it heating up uh sorry about that um thanks for the follow nub so fury thank you so much yeah um appreciate that man i don't know if you're with the switch blue wire going across that hole um it'll bend out of the way just a little bit so the switch doesn't come out of that hole very much um it does a little bit though I think there's enough slack in the system for it to be fine. Right. Okay. There's definitely a little bit there. Now we tend all of that. We're gonna add a little bit more solder to make sure everything flows. Mostly it's actually the flux that we want to go in there correctly. Okay, now we can test whether a switch will go in there or if that'll interfere, um, but good call on checking it out, right? So now we've got our, our little uh, 
spot there. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to be a major problem. It does move out of the way. So there's enough slack. But good call. So now we've got this bridged, right? So now if we put a if we put a switch in right here, which is what we're gonna do, we're gonna put one switch in right there. Right, right, so there's one switch in, and then we're gonna plug everything back in. Plug our daughter board in. plug in right here and we're gonna open up switch hitter and we're gonna push on the one switch and we have our alt back so that's how you guys fix that we're gonna clean this stuff up I cannot fix the one other slot I cannot fix the one other slot that has that but what I can do is test out this one other spot that had a switch or that we fixed, which is our Y with our other bridge on it. Perfect. So now we know that those switches work. Great, those positions do. So great, we're gonna unplug this, pull this daughter board out. the legs no longer certain you're right about the legs no longer certain I'm right about what legs shocks quick new related cue for you all when soldering in an LED assume long leg is positive slash anode and short leg is negative slash cathode would follow that the short leg goes to that yeah so you can't assume that the square pad is is uh is made for positive um you're right about the LEDs, right? The the leg length does does indicate that you are anode or cathode, depending on which length. But um, the PCB, you can't be certain, All right? So we did repair part of this PCB. So this PCB is functional now for that switch position, and this one that the customer probably didn't even know wasn't working. This one we're gonna have to get a Kaiwa hot socket. Um, so I'm gonna have to get with customer and order them, but <laughs> Mechs on deck. Thanks for that raid. I appreciate that 69 people. Welcome everybody. So what we just did, um, for those of you guys who haven't been watching this whole time is we, um, we, we bridged, uh, here, let me get around to it. That's better. So we fixed two hot sockets here. Um, we bridged because this guy came completely delaminated. So we tied in and we didn't tidy that up yet, but we will right now. Um, so we bridged that back and then we bridged this to the switch next to it. With a little solder job we did test it that does take a switch this thing moves out of the way a little bit and then that this one obviously works we fixed another one up here where that pad had come loose we switched that down we applied a little bit of glue around the bottom of it just to add a little bit of stability um and then there's one that's missing and we don't have an extra kaiwa hot socket customer didn't provide it so we're not gonna be able to repair that now so I'm unfortunately not going to be able to finish this repair today, but that's okay. We kind of expected that 
Um, I will get it working and, and show it. Um, but I wanted to make sure that everybody kind of understood that's how we that's how we have that. Uh, it looked like about three of them failed. Or, well, two of them failed hard and one of them was on its way because <laughs> it was loose when I did the test. But everything else on the on the board actually worked. Um, this is a really cool looking case. Um, so kind of hurts, right? The case, in fact, looks really cool. Pull that out. But it has some it has some significant flaws. So it looks beautiful. Um, it really does. Looks fantastic. There's a bottom plate. It's a little warped, although not too much, not enough to not be noticeable. But you can see that some of the um, inserts have come out that hold the plate down. There's a few of them that have one over here. So I'm gonna have to glue some of those into place. I'm not gonna do that until I do the full repair, but all I'll have to do is one more of those hot sockets and then I'll probably just assemble it on stream, um, on a chores stream and show you guys. It's beautiful. Yeah, there are two wood screws to hold the daughter board in place, which is kind of a bummer. Hey, Ian Hulihan, thank you so much for that uh, follow. Sight up, thank you for that follow. Appreciate it again, Mex on deck. How you guys doing today? How you guys doing today? Very Star Trek themed stream. Hey, you know what? Gotta gotta go with what you love, right? Okay, so we did that. Um, we're only two hours in. I don't know if you guys want to see me uh, kind of quickly build a couple big switches onto a PCB. I don't have an awesome case for it, but it is a thing that I've been thinking about doing. Um, I'll kind of let you guys decide because that won't take very long. It's just a controller and two big switches or I can do a controller and a milk. You want to see me solder some stuff? All right. I don't know if there's a, a way to really show off under microscope the big switch soldering. I guess we could try. Um, I don't know. They might be too big. but I'll try it. <clears throat> All right. Big switch. Wonder if it'll show up. <laughs> it's so big that it doesn't like under microscope. It doesn't, uh... <laughs> it looks ridiculous. <laughs> and this is like as zoomed out as we can get to. <laughs> yeah. This is not going to be a solder under a microscope kind of a deal. <laughs> but I will, I will, uh, I will solder it not under a microscope and show you guys. I'll zoom in a bit. So how about that? Hitting that, hey guys, got to work tomorrow. Have a great night. Hey, Rob Shred, take it easy, man. Take it easy. We can, I think we can get this one done pretty quick because it's literally just a controller. And is that a big switch? Where do you get one? Uh, you get them from Novel Keys. Uh, Meek Miser, thank you so much for that follow. Appreciate that. Anybody who, who isn't already following or subbed, you know, consider going up there and hitting that follow. Let's keep in touch. Have a good night, Rob Shred. What's up, Stash? How you doing, man? Oop, don't want that on screen. All right, so here we go. What do you do with this big switch? Well, this is kind of like a little macro pad. Kind of like just a little macro paddy goodness. Um, I don't think there's anything attached to these back guys. So I don't really know why I've got those. Yeah, I don't see anything coming off of those rear traces. Is there something coming off of those traces? No. Nothing. Okay, so we don't need that. 
So we need these two headers, header pins right here. We need this controller and we need these two switches, right? Boop, boop. Um, before we do any of this nonsense, probably need to reprogram this. Um, so we'll get to that real quick. I did not really uh, plan on this part so well because I wanted to repair that other board. But before we go all crazy, let's, uh, let's pop on and see if we can't do this. Um, what is this thing called? Kibio Tuki. Thanks so much, guys. Um, just set up your first big switch lamp with RGB. Nice, Racing Giraffe. Oh, that's cool. That's a cool case. I just don't, I don't have one, unfortunately. That is a cool thing. Okay. So let's go here. Let's find Kim K compatible. See keyboards, KBO two key folder. Uh, so we need to compile it. This is going to be the most fun. I don't remember if it's installed well on here. Hmm. Is there a place to actually just download the damn thing? Oh man, so irritating. Two different reset switches. I just want to download the binary, sucker. Maybe. It probably is not in QMK configurator. But I'm hoping it is. It is. Yay. Okay, so that's RGB mode, which uh, there's no RGB LED strip that I have. So we're going to make this. Um, what are we going to make that switch? We'll make it. We could make it a, a layer and we could have like a game with all the layers. Wait, what's the name in uh, QMK? It's T-U-K-E-Y. T-U-K-E-Y. Tukey. It's this guy. T-B-O slash Tukey. So we're going to make this one uh, just for shits and gigs. We're, we're going to make this one up and the other one down. Um, so then we're gonna compile that sucker. Come back to it, we'll download it, do the whole deal. Um, oof, maybe just wear an eye patch, go full pirate, life's pretty. Oh, finally built your, finally built your rookie, a nice man, nice. Yeah, episode one of Cal and Opes. So the first episode we're releasing, is going to be one of the keyboard 101 series things that we've been talking about doing. Uh, your right eye feels a little funny with you. It's rough, man. Yeah, so um, we. I don't even want to say I'll let TSC w say which one's going to be first. Um, because honestly, I don't want to I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to be wrong. OK. So I'm going to open up QMK toolbox. I'm going to select that. Then I'll open up and show you guys QMK toolbox. Open downloads. Right now I'll show you guys QMK toolbox. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, do I have a BDN9 connected here? No? Okay, it's weird. 
So I just push the reset button on the on the Elite C, right? And then this thing comes up, and then I'm just gonna say flash sucker. Right? And then boom, there we go. Right? And now it says it's a Kibio 2 key. Which is great. Which is great. Okay. So now that we got that up, um, there are so few positions here that we could actually fairly easy just trace them out. Um, uh, funny thing is, is I don't see any diode spots, but I guess you don't need diodes because uh, you're not, <laughs> they don't have to be in a string, right? So it kind of doesn't matter. Um, I will, however, open Opera back up and we can go to the two key and we'll go to, oh, there's no instructions, huh? No instructions. Okay, guys. Okay. I mean, it should be pretty straightforward, but like, why aren't there instructions? Accepts all these things, different kinds of reach set switches, breakout pins for RGB, footprint for piezo, M3. Come on, man. No instructions. Tech technical documentation. Uh, control F two key. No. Come on. All right. I guess we're I guess we're going to wing it, guys going to be real interesting. <laughs> um, okay, so obviously this must be the bottom. Um, this must be the bottom, I'm hoping. Reset switch, ob obby goes in there. And then there's the top. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say it goes there. I love these giant pins that are on here. You can tell that it's the top, that this is the top, right? Because these switches kind of only go in one way. All right. So we're gonna, on the bottom, we're gonna put this reset switch in. There's only a few <laughs> instructions are for chumps anyways. Aren't they though? Aren't they though? Hmm. I guess we're gonna pull this out. I guess we're gonna get our... Now, now is literally like the only time I've ever wished that I had a smaller, um, that I had a smaller soldering mat. <laughs> we're just gonna do it on this. And if we start a fire, we have all of our fire safety stuff in here. Uh, so I don't know if you guys noticed, but we did in fact hit our goal uh, and surpassed it by quite a lot, in fact. On the charity stream. So, uh, I'm gonna hold true to my promise, but I'm not sure when or exactly where, because it may not be on Twitch. People have me, like, all worried that, like, singeing up my arm hair somehow with a fire toy is going to, like, get me a Twitch ban, which is silly, because people spin fire on Twitch sometimes, and literally all you do is go. Whoosh, done. I'm not going to singe it all off. I'm just going to singe the underside off, which is what I said I would do. Um, so I don't know when it's going to happen, but it's going to happen. Sorry for that reason. I'm out. <laughs> oof, dude, oof. Come back, BBB. We like you. Okay. Um, my numpad is not made of tiny cheese crumbs. All somehow melted together. I don't want it nice. Racing giraffe, it will happen. It will happen. I just don't know if it's gonna happen on here or on Instagram. I don't know. Like, like I said, people are, are freaked out. I think it's not that big of a deal. There's like a zero percent chance we're gonna get hurt on this because you know. I've done this thing before with fire. 
plenty of people do this on purpose. Most fire spinners actually lose all of the hair like right here anyway. Um, and then many of them, usually women, um, will like just burn their hair off before they go to an event where they're going to spin fire. Like I've seen it a lot, right? Because they don't want it to smell like singed hair uh, when they go when they go to an event, which is fair, I think. So this should work like this, I believe. I hope that it's, I hope that it goes upside down as per usual. Um, fire for chumps, use plasma. Oof, dude. Plasma spinners. I don't know how you would do that, man. I don't know. Gotta be honest. I don't, I may have a non low profile one, which I would prefer to use actually. We're gonna use this. Yeah, it's, well, I mean, if you did damage, like if you burned the actual follicles, that could do damage, but with a wick, there's like a 0% chance. So, so fire goes up like heat rises off of fire. So flame will like shoot out a little bit down below something, but it'll be rising. So if you run a wick that is with your arm under it, right? It'll, it will singe the hairs that the fire touches, but all the heat is going up. Um, so if you hold your hand, your arm over it, you will absolutely harm yourself. Don't do that part. Okay. So we're gonna tack this down. I guess I should zoom way in so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Okay. So this is our little elite C that we're soldering here. Where? So there is a, a somewhat faster way to do this. I could technically drag solder all of this. see that invite shocks sorry man I had to go look thank you buddy I will join it in a little bit Okay, boys and girls, I'll show that part under microscope. You guys kind of see what we did there. Just tacked all those pins down.
Happy little solder joints. Okay, you could eat barbecue every day. <laughs> you know, Leon. Nice, man. All right, so, um, macro microvision. Yeah, it is kind of macro microvision. Sorry about that. Okay, so, uh, great. Now we should have a board that actually does what we want it to do. And bridging should be interesting. So we'll open our, um, you know what? We'll open switch hitter. And funny enough, if you look at this, uh, we have, we're only gonna have two. So we'll have up and we'll have down. Perfect. That's all we got. All right. So now macro micro vision is gonna give us, I don't know which one we want where, I don't really care that much. Um, I kind of wish I had a clicky one. Those ones seem to always be out of stock for some wild ass reason. So because these aren't probably the most stable things, I I'm gonna solder them together like this. This is gonna be somewhat ridiculous because there's so much thermal mass here comparatively, compared to most of the things that we do on here. Clicky is the best, yeah, I agree. For the big switch, especially. So here we go. We're gonna peat up the whole back of this thing. Right, so we got that one in there. We're gonna flow more solder onto it, obviously in a minute. Uh, Sun Sun, Aaron Lowell, thank you so much for that follow. Anybody who's uh, who's not already following or subbed, you know, please go up here and, and hit that. I would appreciate it. You've got one clickier and one linear, or one clicky and one linear for yours. That makes sense, kind of. So I just tacked the one down over there and I'm gonna tack the one down over here because there's a, like a huge amount of play. So this kind of shows you how you should be soldering normally. Right? Um, you should be heating the pad and the pin up at the same time. And that's kind of what we're doing over here. We can kind of add a little bit here to make this a little bit faster. Right, so what we did there, we got like a little bit of tinning going on there. Um, you could have added a bunch of flux too. So we're gonna heat that whole deal up. Basically we're heating this pin up. Right, oh, there it all flowed. That's fine. Now, the reason that we're just kind of tacking that one down for what it's worth, guys, is uh, because it's just going to hold the switch in place while we do the next one. All right. So, boom, centered and good. OK, now that those ones are in place, we'll go to the thicker pin, which is actually going to take a lot more energy to heat up. Um. So this is just us kind of tinning the whole thing. Maybe. And there's a huge thermal mass here. This is a really powerful, oh, it's on setback, that's why. Um, ooh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Uh, but for what? Oh yeah, yeah, for whatever I want. It's just two switches um, for kind of whatever you want to do with them. kind of the deal. Okay. So funny thing, man, this takes like a ton, a ton of solder. So basically I'm just trying to get it all tinned and make sure that it flows.
Oh, this is a really powerful soldering iron, and it's even this. Like, Stash, what did you do yours with, man? Like, what soldering iron do you have that did this thing just fine? Oh, you haven't built yours. Yeah, I want to get a case for mine too, but I don't have one yet, so. We're actually going to tin this whole pad. Thermal conductivity of this solder is much higher. That just flowed the whole thing, basically, which is good. Okay, perfect. This one is a little cold in some areas, so I'm going to reheat the whole thing up. I think this is like a test of your iron. Like legitimately. Kind of crazy. Wow, I'm gonna show you guys these joints under microscope so you can kind of understand. So this is how we've kind of attacked this thing. Right, so if you look, the back side of this pin is not tacked down at all yet. Right, but the front side is of that same pin. So we haven't flown or or tinned that whole one, but these ones we have. Right? So that is a well-flown joint, and I'll show you the other side. Right? So that obviously worked pretty well. This side is not well, the joint is good, but the tinning on the whole pin is not necessarily, but it doesn't matter. So that is a fully flown joint, right? Plus there's some flux residue on there. So pretty funny. Oh, I love Stash's Instagram. <laughs> I love looking at your desk, man. You have such a nice desk, Stash. Oh, yeah, yeah wood stuff wood stuff is cool man oh, here it helps if I turn my fan on so yeah so we'll heat this whole thing you don't really need to tin all the way up this but I want to it helps with thermal conductivity right There's going to be some flux residue on there because it's so big. Okay. The joint now looks clean though. So the other thing we're going to do These are giant heat sink, man. Perfect. So that looks like it did its job. Took forever. Full tinning. I think it does look nice. Um, after we wipe the flux residue off, it will look nice. So here you can kind of see. Right, fully tinned, fully tinned, 
full joint there. It kind of doesn't look like it because of the bulge right there, but it is fully flown. Um, yeah, dude, his his setup looks so sick. Um, So it's going to be really interesting to remove all of this in order to get the screws into that place. <laughs> but we'll make it work. Um, so anyway, now we should be able to plug this bad boy in and uh, turn up switch hitter. Actually click on switch hitter. Right. And we'll get the... Uh, we get the little keycaps on there. Where did I put them? There they are. Need some lube. I thought about lubing them, Stash. I'm, uh, I was actually thinking about doing it. Um, and I may still, because it's not impossible to pop these off with them here. So this is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'm a pretty big fan. I think that's awesome. A five gallon bucket of 205 grade zero. Uh, I mean, I have enough 205 grade zero to lube these, no problem. Yeah, that won't be a problem. I like it. But the question is, do I clip the pins? Ooh. <laughs> no, I'm not going to clip the pins. Anyway, I actually may clip them down to where those are, though. So, yeah, I'm um, hoping you guys like this. It would take quite a lot of lube to lube them, if I'm being honest. It really would. I especially love that there's like two giant LED holes here. Like, are you gonna put an LED there? Cause that would be so sick. We just need somebody to get a make or to make a giant LED. <laughs> Don't use your good flush cutters. Yeah, no joke. Uh, I would probably use, I do have a pair of old flush cutters that aren't that good. Yeah. Yeah, or like just regular side cutters, not flush cuts. Yeah, so the miter saw, no joke. Yeah, so the plan actually was to make these foot switches. Tin snips, yeah, that would work. Tin snips, it would work. Yeah, so probably I will clip them. Um, I don't know, I think it worked out just fine. I think it's kind of nice. Now, mine doesn't have a case around it, but one day I'll get a case and then I'll solder the um, the little leads for, um, for RGB in there and I'll I'll make it do that thing. But I will have to desolder these switches off of this PCB in order to get it to do that. I will indeed. All right, well, there you go, boys and girls. Quite beautiful. It's been a great night. Hopefully, hopefully you guys have had a great time. Thanks again, seriously, for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Oof. It's so loud. Oh man, what a silly thing. What am I doing? Where's the typing test? I know, right? I mean, it's gonna be real interesting, just... That's all I got, man. <laughs> Up and down. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'll probably make a play pause or I don't know what I'll do with them for sure, but it'll be cool. All right. Um, I don't know who else is streaming right now. I'm sure somebody is. I'm sure somebody is up and about. Um, who do I got? Well, Nathan is Nathan is streaming Valorant, but is anybody streaming? Minterly is on. Okay, okay. Um, yep, yeah, we're gonna stream. We're gonna raid Minterly. What do you guys think? Say hey to Minterly. All right, guys. Uh, Andy V. Nguyen. Uh, who's Andy? Anthony V. Nguyen. I don't have Anthony V. Nguyen, but I will find him. Is that another? Anthony V. Nguyen. Uh, hmm. Oh, Andy V. Nguyen. That makes better sense. Andy V. See who that is. Thank you so much, man. Oh, yeah. He's not right now, though, right? Oh, maybe he is. I don't know. I've got an ad. I hate ads on Twitch. Sorry, guys. I wish I could turn them off for you on my stream. Um, but there's only like two options, right? There's I could roll a 90 minute in stream or you can deal with the starting one. Which kind of sucks. Um, Evil D's. Thank you so much for the follow, man. I appreciate that. So before I go, anybody who isn't already uh, following, I guess go up in that corner over there and uh, click that follow button if you want to hang out. Uh, I would absolutely love to have you guys on more. We do all sorts of silly stuff like this and fixing boards like that, but we also we also do like, you know, a bunch of serious keyboard builds like pretty regularly, like every week. Like this weekend, I believe we're going to be doing a KBD 8X Mark II. Um, what else do I have in here? I have a, a to another Tofu Acrylic. I have an HBCP that's going to get built. Um, I'm expecting some of my boards like Kepler and stuff like that. Serious HQ key builds. Um, yeah, I'll absolutely give that guy a read. I like new guys. Um, so we'll do that. Paco desolder tool. So he's $86 toward an FR301. That's not a bad deal. Only hander bite allowed. Oof. Oof. All right. Well, um, I'll tell you what, man. We're going to raid him. And you guys, I hope you have a great time over there. I love my stream. I love all of you guys. Um, I'll figure out how to do the hair singeing off thing soon. Um, like that I promised from our from our thing, you know. I still have the tools in here. I think it's probably gonna end up on Instagram because uh, then I don't have to worry about Twitch being, you know, like, oh my God, you're harming yourself, which we aren't gonna do on stream ever. Um, all right, take it easy, Racing Giraffe. Take it easy, everybody else. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, yeah, I had a great time. Let's do it again soon. Let's do it again soon. Good night, guys. Catch you soon. Thank you to Nubs of Fury. Thank you. Good night, guys.